weather bulletin 81 coming at a slightly different time than normal. 3 p.m. UTC, June the 11th, we have three storms active. Hurricane Christina, currently located in the eastern Pacific offshore Mexico. Tropical storm Nanak, currently located in the Arabian Sea between India and the Arabian Peninsula. And uh, Mitag, which has formed in the western Pacific near the Jap- Japanese islands. Um, and also Invest 95 in the South China Sea. Let's take a look at all of those on satellite imagery. First of all, the Western Pacific, 95W forming there in the Western Pacific, as well as Tropical Storm Mitag, which is likely to be a short-lived tropical storm as it moves towards the northeast, likely to turn extra-tropical very soon, just east of Okinawa. Uh, No other systems in the Western Pacific, but those two are enough to keep us occupied for now. The Eastern Pacific, as you can see, it's very... um, devoid of activity out in the open waters but we do have Hurricane Cristina which is located off the coast of Mexico delivering some rain here and there as well along the coast but most of the storm is staying out to sea. The North Atlantic remains quiet at the moment uh, since we had 90L that invest last week um, which spawned off Boris really. Uh, There hasn't been anything of note um, in the Gulf of Mexico, fairly quiet there Um, so the North Atlantic remaining quiet. And the Indian Ocean, Nanark, currently located in the Arabian Sea to the west of India, in between India and Oman, which is likely to strike in the next few days. More on that one very shortly. So let's take a look first of all at Hurricane Christina, Category 1 storm, 75 miles per hour, a pressure of 990 millibars. Its current position is 15.4 degrees north, 104.5 degrees west, and is expected to move towards the west or west-northwest as a Category 1 storm. Maybe a little bit more intensification on the way. Uh, at the moment, it's not expected to reach Category 2 intensity, but it isn't out of the question entirely. Um, and the storm's expected to weaken days three to five as it moves towards the northwest. Can't rule out any um, effects being felt on the Baja California Peninsula, but at the moment it seems that the storm will remain out to sea. Current warnings in effect are along the coast of Mexico. Rain advisories really for all those provinces highlighted in yellow there along the Mexican coastline. Um, Not too much for concern really because most of the storm is staying offshore but you get the odd um, thunderstorm or two which is associated with the storm that will impact land over there and probably produce some heavy rain Uh, but no real threat. Moving on to the Arabian Sea which is where we have Tropical Storm Nanak, currently located at position 17.4 degrees north, 66.1 east, 65 miles per hour, and a pressure of 982 millibars. And this storm is also expected to become a hurricane equivalent cyclone as it moves towards the west-northwest, a similar direction to um, Christina actually, um, moving towards the west-northwest and approaching Oman as a Category 1 uh, cyclone and could make landfall near that intensity, uh, though with the area around there, lots of dry air of course, with the desert environment almost. Um, As the storm moves inland it will dissipate uh, very quickly. And in the western Pacific we have Tropical Storm Mitag, currently located pretty much directly over the small Diota Islands of Japan, uh, to the east of the Ryukyu Island chain, with winds of 45 miles per hour and a pressure of 994 millibars, 25.6 degrees north, 130.1 degrees east. This storm is expected to move towards the northeast um, and turn extra tropical very soon. Um, if not in 12 hours, then in 24, we will probably see Mitag be no more in terms of tropical cyclone um, terms. But um, threat to land, possibly gales along those Japanese islands and maybe the southern coast of the mainland as well. Indeed, we have some warnings in effect already. Gale advisories for Okinawa, Amami and the Daiata Islands. Um, all those three there uh, highlighted in yellow. And you can see the storm itself located almost squarely over the Daiato Islands as of this update time. Uh, but it will move away very quickly. 45 mph winds and probably delivering heavy rain, particularly towards its eastern side. So let's take a look at the sea surface temperatures right now in the eastern Pacific first of all. Uh, were the storms located somewhere around the Mexican coastline there, 29 to 30 degrees Celsius uh, waters around there, so certainly ripe and warm enough for development, at least until around day 3 to 5, when it moves in between um, the province of uh, Jalisco and Baja California, which is where the waters will 
begin to turn cooler. The Western Pacific remaining warm as well, uh, 30 degrees or so. Where that storm is located right now, around 26 degrees, marginal really. Uh, so that's why it will probably turn extra tropical very soon, along with high wind shear, which we'll come on to very shortly. The Indian Ocean, where Anark is currently located, temperatures around 30 degrees, uh, a little pocket in between where it is and Oman, where it will fall to around 28 to 29. But still, no cause for concern with that in that regard because 26 degrees is the general threshold for cyclone development. So looking at the shear maps, this is the Indian Ocean first of all. The tropical storm symbol is um, indicating where Nanark is. It's on a fine line really between good amounts of shear for the storm and high amounts which will tear it apart. So it's just about hanging on at the moment, though I, I say that it intensified in the past 24 hours so uh, it's certainly not doing too badly but it is rising ahead of it the sheer amounts so that might be a little bit of a um, um, a in impediment for the storm in the next 24 hours the eastern pacific that other tropical storm icon is christina it should actually be a hurricane icon now but this is probably a little bit dated this imagery but still relevant uh, low shear amounts all around that storm very low indeed, no low, no higher than around 15 knots or so, so not too bad at all for cyc cyclone development and remaining fairly um, constant at the moment until the storm reaches the Baja California Peninsula or its equivalent longitude. Uh, looking at the Western Pacific, extremely high amounts of shear over Japan, but that is pretty normal um, and increasing. So the uh, current storm is riding a fine line as well with this one uh, between low amounts and high amounts but it's going to be a matter of time before the high amount of shear will completely tear it apart. It is already displacing the storm's um, so storm centre to the east. Uh, as, as far as the investing is concerned, around half and half there as well. Looking at the eastern Pacific, uh, Hurricane Christina is located to the right hand side of the image. Lots of dry air present to the west of the storm out at sea, but at the moment not causing too much trouble for Hurricane Christina, um, though it may become a problem in future as it moves towards the west northwest in the next two days or so. We might see some dry air intrusion which will um, affect the storm. Might though is the key word with that. Hurricane Christina, this is the um, satellite imagery, the latest floater imagery in the past few hours. Uh, you could possibly see a little bit of an eye forming perhaps there, uh, too difficult to tell really, but it's wrapping itself around nicely. It's a fairly compact storm, at least the central core of the storm is. Um, one or two spiral bands, uh, you can see that other area of heavy thunderstorms towards its uh, east side of the storm, and there's a little pocket of thunderstorms towards its north as well over Mexico, which you saw earlier but you can't see on that image. Uh, Tropical Storm Nanark only static imagery for this one. Uh, you can see the centre of the storm is fairly intense but around it uh, towards the northeast in particular not really too much to do with the storm over there. Computer models will have a proper look at these a little bit later on with the individual storm updates but as for Christina at least you can see the uh, green line the GFDL taking it to category 2 intensity DSHP taking it to uh, borderline cat 1 cat 2 uh, and these are the storm tracks. The green line's been fairly consistent with interaction with the Paya California Peninsula for quite a while, uh, but the other two have stayed away, the red and the blue line, um, as, have, as they have done for quite a while. That's still got the consensus at the moment. Shear values, as I said, going to be very low in the next few days until the 14th of June or so where it will begin to, to rise. The sea surface temperatures will begin to descend a little bit. By days 4 and 5, if it does go out to sea, sea surface temperatures will cool significantly and will probably prove a problem for the storm's existence. And the relative humidity is remaining fairly average at the moment, though it is on a general track downwards over the next five days. That could be an issue by days four and five. So what happened on this day on June the 11th in 1993? Tropical storm Adrian formed in the eastern Pacific, as did Agatha five years later in 1998. In 2001, subtropical storm Allison made landfall near Morgan City, Louisiana after stalling over Texas. In 2004, a tropical storm Dianmu formed in the West Pacific and that went on to become a Category 5 typhoon um, in the following days. It reached peak intensity on June the 16th. 
In 2005, tropical storm Arlene made landfall near Pensacola. Damages of $11.8 million and a single fatality occurring there. That's pictured the first storm of the 2005 season. Uh, two years later, Tropical Depression 3E formed in the eastern Pacific. And in 2011, Tropical Storm Sarika made landfall in China, causing 23 fatalities and $248 million in damages in China. You can track any storm that forms at the website, force13.com forward slash stormtracking.html is the main page for all the um, storms out there. Three right now, of course, Hurricane Christina, Tropical Storm Nanak, and uh, Tropical Storm Mitag. Uh, all three storms can be tracked, including the Invest as well, 95W, Mitag, the sixth storm of the Western Pacific, Christina the third of the Eastern Pacific, and Nanak is the first one to be named in the North Indian Ocean, though technically the second storm of the year so far over there. Um, and should we see any storms form in the Southern Hemisphere? It's not unheard of, but it is very unlikely at this time of year. Kate is the next storm in the Australian region, Girani in the Southwest Indian Ocean, and Newt in the uh, South Pacific uh, around Fiji. There's the storm tracking page on Force 13's website, and that will keep you up to date with any um, new developments. And you can visit any of Force 13's outlets, there's six in all. You can visit the website, force13.com, which will have more than storm tracking to keep you entertained. And the uh, video pages, YouTube and Daily Motion, just search Force 13 uh, for either of those. And the social platforms, Facebook and Twitter, search for Force 13 on there, at Force 13 on Twitter if you'd like to get in touch. And you can also speak to me personally on Skype for Tropical Weather Chat. Just add Fool13. The next update will be for individual storms, maybe tonight or possibly tomorrow, the 12th of June. <laughs>